We thank and glorify our Lord. I would like us to open our Bibles. As I was looking to my Bible, I said, Lord, from where should I read? And at the same time I was praying. And I ended up as the Lord laid it into my heart to read only one beatitude. We read from a gospel according to Matthew chapter 5 and I would like to read only verse 8 blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God We thank and glorify our Lord. Blessed are those who have a pure heart, a spiritual heart. Besides, this night we don't have any conference to speak about this heart that our body has. Doctors speak about these hearts. But we, this night we want to speak about this spiritual heart which the Lord knows, since He says that He knows the hearts and minds of man. What is this heart, this spiritual heart, that anyway the Word of God calls us and asks from us to have it clean, to keep it clean? This means that not all have a clean heart. And that there is a problem, there is an issue. But it says that those who have their heart clean, they shall see God. And I want to believe that it doesn't mean only one day that we will be found in the heavenly of kingdom, and then we'll see, and then we will see Him face to face. But it also means that one who has the clean, a clean heart even now, he can see the Lord. Perhaps he has a different relationship with God. Perhaps he might see more clear, more spiritually. He might have a revelation. Perhaps the Lord speaks to him. What kind of man was Abraham that God called him friend and he showed him and revealed to him his plans? Did God live with partiality? Far be it. God sees something every, every time. He sees something to man with, with whom he has a special relationship. A good father like... Um, the father to whom who we have believed, he never was and he never will look with partiality. But he finds hearts exactly as he wants them to be. He finds hearts as the Lord wants them. And as a result of this, there is a communication. There is an access. He speaks to him. The man enjoys his presence. And I said, Lord, give me an example so that I may understand it a little bit better. And I want to stop. I want us to stop to profit 
the prophet Daniel even the smallest children that are in this room they know very well the story with Daniel isn't it so Daniel who was found in the pit of the lions and the angel of the Lord went and stopped the the mouths of the lion from eating him as a result of this nothing happened to Daniel some people when they want to stand to stop this story they say that he had the faith of God he had the faith of God that's why the lions didn't eat him that's nice but tell me how can we gain this faith where should I go so that I may get such a faith is it sold somewhere show me the way so that I may get this faith and the lion won't bite me because lion it wasn't only back then but lions exist today also continually their mouths are by your side and they're ready to to eat you the devil has a great hunger but I personally cannot be convinced nor be informed when someone tells me that he just had faith we have to analyze it we have to understand which is the constitution of this man which is his conduct what is happening with Daniel we saw that in the land in which the people of Israel were found captive and one of them was Daniel but God prospered him he gave him grace he became important in the side of Darius he became one of the uh, um, three presidents and we see that the grace of the Lord was special um, in him and he made him the higher president from all the rest the people the other presidents of the court of the palace were trying to find something against it but they couldn't they're trying to find something to accuse him that is but they can't find anything and of course the enemy is always uh, trying to find ways in order to hurt the children of God so they found this um, this command that if Darius would sign it it cannot be annulled through the um, so they trapped Daniel with this command he made a request before God because the way that Daniel lives that's how it is to communicate with the Lord to speak to him to pray to him no matter which his position could be his relationship with God cannot be changed nor altered so he didn't take into account the commandments and seals uh, of Midians and Persians nothing he continued to pray and he continued to pray indeed three times per day he was praying to God as he always did in his life they caught him so the final cause now to accuse him you made the petition to God you have to accept as your transgressor Darius with a heavy heart he couldn't change what he had signed and when and a man and a day comes in the man of God and things come to be very difficult things weren't like yesterday the other day but now all of a sudden and his life has changed everything from the position that he was a president now he was found in the pit of the lions in danger to lose his life of course Darius didn't sleep he 
felt guilty guilty he felt that it was very wrong to do that that he didn't want to be entertained during that night and early in the morning he went above from the pit and he started crying out Daniel the God whom you worship continually Was he able to deliver you? Did he make made it to deliver you? And he leaned his ear somehow to listen his voice. To hear the voice of Daniel through the pit of the lions. How many are the possibilities for Daniel to be alive? Are there any possibilities that a man to come out alive? From a pit that is full of lions, can he come alive? Can he come out alive? If you have faith now, everything can happen. Okay, we didn't say that we, you shouldn't believe. But how is it this faith? What should I do so that lions won't bite me? Since I'm found in this situation that the Daniel was, that Daniel was. The explanation came through the pit. Uh, the explanation came through the pit. When Daniel opened his mouth and he said to Darius, King, live, long live. The, the God has sent an angel and the lions didn't hurt me. So are you alive? Are you alive in the pit? According to the things that are happened to your life, you shouldn't exist. How is it that you are alive? And if you open the book of Daniel says he gives an explanation to Darius he explains him for what reason the lions didn't hurt him he explains it and it says my God has sent his angel and he stopped the eating of lions and they didn't hurt me because innocence was found before him And before you, king, I didn't commit a transgression. Tell me, my beloved brethren, does the heart of Daniel has something and need to have problems, exceptions? I like him, I don't like him. Was he troubled because of the accusation of this betrayal? Is he anointed from decisions and from commands that had been signed? Is he anointed because he is in a land that is foreign, that he is captive? Is he troubled because of this? Have all these events troubled him? If you find some uh, are called to search and find something is hard will we find something and if we couldn't search it at least we see the results brethren amen brethren we see the results in his life yes this is faith because faith by itself cannot stand as paul says to the galatians circumcision and circumcision has no effect but what is important is faith through love That is a faith that starts from somewhere. It starts from love. And where can love stand? Where can love stand? But only in a heart which is clean. And Daniel saw God in that pit. 
he could see God in that pit. Because that's how God prospers and blesses his children. Rather, that's how the Lord finds access to bless his children. When his child has a clean heart, though things might be difficult in his life, so God comes and he gives him grace. And no matter how di how much difficult things might be, no matter how many mouths of lions uh, might be by his side, the Lord has loosed all hands to his hands to do whatever he wishes in the life of this man. In contradiction, I wrote the parable of the uh, prodigal son. Now I'm leaving from then. I'm, I'm going to pro for the, to the prodigal son, and I said, Lord. There we see a different case. There we see a case of a man, and I don't want to speak about the prodigal son. But it is wrong to call him a prodigal son, since he has returned to the father. It's wrong that we say Thomas an unbeliever because he is one of the twelve apostles but I understand this parable about the elder son he who didn't leave his house he didn't backslide he didn't spare the fortune of his father prodigally he didn't go with tax collectors and didn't commit sexual immorality or anything else but he was always with his father he was always working there without abandoning his father not even for one day and no matter how many years may pass by if you observe him you will call him to be a perfect son good for him he never left he never backslided but tests come in the hearts of man so that they may be known all of a sudden something happens in the life of someone and why does this happen not so that others may see which is their heart the Lord doesn't want to show anyone and he doesn't photograph anyone and he doesn't uh, show someone so that he may be pointed out with their finger but he permits situations in our life so that you may see you yourself which is your heart you and I each one of us so that we may see how much serious it is what we say that I am clean in heart and the Beatitudes the Lord himself said on the mount and the whole people were sitting there and they were listening these wonderful words a word which many times comes and goes but it's very serious blessed are those who have a pure heart because they will see God do you want to see God do you want to see the Lord if you want to see the Lord then change the the importance of your petitions and put above all your petitions your heart each one's each one is heart so the elder son he came back and as he came back from the fields he heard dancing and music and a servant came out and he told him come here what are these things that we I'm listening what does this mean and he said your brother has come back the, the one the prodigal son no your brother has come and your father has slaughtered 
the calf because he enjoyed him healthy. What are you saying? You are a servant. Have you forgotten that you are a servant? How have you understood all these things that your brother has come? What are the things that you are telling me? And you see the oldest son in that moment to become angry, to lose the earth under his feet, to realize in his heart that he has many things and a servant right before him tries to say pleasant things. And now I do not compare the eldest son with the father. But I'm, I compare him with a servant. I see that he was glad that the younger son has come back, that the father has killed the fatted calf. And that sees that see this son is healthy. But I don't see the older son to be glad. And in that day of joy, of feast, he is sorrowed. And he is indignant. The Lord cannot cooperate with such a heart. Neither will he save the older son because he didn't miss a day. The Lord never did he rely to something like this, to something that someone can call it prudence. Uh, that's a nice thing, but what is important for God is, is our hearts. The most important for the Lord is how you feel and how I feel. How your spiritual heart works, and how my heart works. Besides, in chapter 13 to the Corinthians, it speaks about the chapter of love. Because you might have achieved many things and you might have come to the point with your faith to move mountains. You might even have made it to distribute all your possessions to the poor. You might have made this also. You might be first in prophecy and preaching first everywhere. But if your heart doesn't have love, then there is no use of it. But this love cannot find ground, cannot find a house to dwell if I don't want it. And the heart which wants the love to abide in us is the heart that has as a goal continually to be clean before the Lord. We thank and glorify our Lord. Not, not very often, but daily. At any time, we should ask for the blood of Christ to clean us, to wash us, to wash us and to take this heart and we should take this heart before him and he to purify it daily making a daily check a daily um, uh, examining daily our heart lest we have something in our heart lest I want him I don't want him there's a story that I found out in the in the Bible and I was discussing it with some brethren and a fellowship that we had. Many times we have a course and we say David says that he was a man according to the heart of God. Is it that the wrong that the Lord is wrong? He has slaughtered so many people. How is it possible such a man of blood as you have called him to be the man that is according to your heart could we have a question about this this night what do you find to David or to any 
other David. And God called him in this way. Why does he like uh, the way that he walks? Even if he falls, even if he commits wrong things, even if he commits wrong uh, sins, uh, strong sins, you see, brethren, is the way that the that a heart works. See the case that I found. We are in Siklag. We are there where David is with his other man in that city and he is persecuted from Saul. He runs from city to city, from cave to cave, from mountain to mountain. I could take other events from his life but I want to stand at this because it impressed me personally. So he is in the city of Siklag and something very cruel happens. So the Amalekites go the moment that David was missing with his man and they captured all the women and the children that are there. They make captive all the children and the women and when they go back they find no one. And so great sorrow came to them and they started all to cry and to mourn. A great burden came into their heart because a very, a very cruel day came to them. And David was even more distressed because all the fingers are pointing out to him. And they are saying, it's your fault. And now his brothers are ready to stone him. We shouldn't look at this just like a simple story. These are events. These are events in the daily life of the man of God. And behind every door, there is always hiding a serious event, either greater or smallest. And now here David has an issue. He has lost his wife, his children, uh, his wives, he has lost his children, his uh, brothers and sisters, his brothers uh, turned against him. There is a panic. We would say that a great disaster has come. He asks for an ephod. He goes to Abai Athar. There is an only way to pray to God. And he prays. The Lord tells him, Go. You will reach him. I'll be with you. So he starts and he finds in the way an Egyptian man. The Egyptian man was ready to die. He gave him to eat. And he asked him, tell us, where are our women and children? The Amalekites to took them. They reached them. A battle take place. And they take their women and children back. But now you'll tell me, why does all the, what do all these things have to do with a clean heart that sees God? What do all these things have to do with a clean heart? Do you mean that God spoke to him and told uh, told him to reach them? God uh, is used to this. He comes daily to contact with God. Now, this is not the point. The point is why David? Why David and not some other people? Um, why don't they speak like David? Why are they not so much loved like David? For which reason David is so much loved? For what reason? Last night I heard something very nice from the pulpit here. Yeah. Th from
for the optional giving. And the issue is not that I'm giving. The issue is that how am I giving it? And this struck my heart in the moment that I heard it. Because everyone gives. One day the Lord gathered them. Come and see all those who put um, in the treasure box and a widow went and put two mines. There is a difference. And this difference as a beginning has a heart because you might want to give so that you may be to so that you may show yourself, but you might also want to give because your heart is in this way made, but there are some people that make a difference. And God finds access to this man and he cooperates with them and he reveals and he blesses them. So they went and they took the children and their wives. I forgot to tell you that in the moment that they were going to the battle, there were 600 uh, men, 600 men. The 200, they, were, they grew weary and they stayed back and the 400 men went to make the battle. So they took the children and the wives and they came back. But there they plundered a lot of things. The 400 that gave the battle being justified, said that we should distribute the plant as soon as we took them from the Amalekites. And from the midst of them, David came out and told them, not through, you should distribute them not to the 400 men, but to the 600 men. And some evil jumped up, and they said, no, this is wrong. Why? Did you see them to any battle? Did you see them to to run and, and fight? Give them their wives and their children, that's enough for them. No, David said, you will distribute it to the 600 men and this will become a command. And, and from this now on, that's the way that the planters will be given. Tell me, my beloved brethren, which um, hearts make these decisions and which are the people that have the Spirit of Christ on them? Which are these people that are thinking in this way? Do you know how the Lord strives, our Lord Jesus Christ, to make this kind of disciples? Because they stand before a city that does not accept them. If we don't accept them, we should um, strike fire so that they may be burnt. And the Lord says, you don't know of which spirit you are. This is not the spirit that I want to, to teach you and to give you. And now David comes to a period of hatred to tell us why what that the righteous thing is from the planters to receive those who stayed back and he calls the other 400 evil and perverted my beloved brethren we should know that in the kingdom of heaven only those who are of clean heart will enter but even more this last days the Lord will use men which have cleaned their heart and when we say that they have their clean heart we mean it you can't say that I love him and I don't love him I like him and I don't like him I have with him a different you know Many times I've heard that I've changed the church so that I'm, I may not see him and forget it. You've changed your church so that you may not see him. And which is your, your fight to clean your heart? No, you should see him till you clean your heart. And he's hard to be cleaned. And one day you'll embrace one another and the Lord to rejoice there in heaven. Since it says that the whole heaven 
was in a feast when this prodigal son came back. But the elder son was sorrowed. The spiritual life is from glory to glory, and the heart cannot be cleansed in one night. You cannot this night just um, go and pray and say, clean my heart. This is a good petition, but it won't happen in one night. But we all have to get into that procedure. Because the glory of God has to be manifested. And the glory of the Lord is manifested to the children of God when you sit among the lands and they don't harm you at all. And this cannot happen neither with magic things or with miracles nor with tricks. This is something that you can make it. It, it, is pre it was prepared from Daniel what would happen in the pit of the lions. Daniel has prepared this because he said that innocence has been found before him and before you, king. And, and the gospel according, in the gospel according to John, it says that if our heart does not condemn us, we have boldness toward God. Sword to the epistle. See how a good, a clean heart finds the way to God, and how God finds a way to the heart of a man. My beloved brethren, if our heart doesn't condemn us, then we have boldness toward God, and whatever we ask from Him, we receive it from Him, because we keep keep His commandments and do we do what is pleasing in His sight. So, His heart. Daniel, his heart doesn't condemn him. He has boldness before God. And he said, Lord, stop their mouths. In just seconds, every, these lions became sheep. We thank and glorify our Lord. This is what the Lord wants. He wants hearts which cooperate. And a heart that cooperate, cooperates is the clean heart. We thank and glorify our Lord. And at some point, when we, you will get a level to a level then you'll be called to get another level see what Paul asked from Philemon from Philemon but from Philemon whose faith whose love his entertainment and his ministry is known to all the places of the earth he has gained levels no one says not but there is a level more I want my good child Philemon to accept Onesimus whom I have born and the bonds of my of my prison. I know that it will, he was useless at some point or that he may have anointed you and many other things though I could tell you and command you but I want you to do what is fit to do? To do what, my brother Paul? To accept Onesimus as, uh, as if nothing has happened in the past. Onesimus? Should I accept Onesimus? Yes, of course. You have to accept Onesimus. That is when the heart of man comes to the level of Jesus Christ to be crucified and to say forgive them Lord they do not know what they're doing and Stephen to be stoned to bleed and to breathe his last and say Lord forgive them because they do not know what they're doing these are the clean hearts to which belong one beatitude, they will see God. May the Lord bless us. Amen.